Hummingbirds are amazing. Hummingbirds can hover in place and are the only birds that can fly backwards. They have the fastest wing beats of any bird at up to 72 times per second. At a shutter speed of 1250th of a second, the wings are blurred. You need a shutter speed of 1 3200th of a second to freeze the wings. With a slight turn of the head, they can reveal the iridescent colors of their throats and crowns. Hummingbirds are the smallest of all birds in the US, with this calliope, the smallest, weighing less than a penny. Hummingbird tongues are long and they are grooved like the shape of a W. They have tiny hairs on the tip of the tongue to help lap up nectar. Hummingbird hearts beat as fast as 1,200 beats per minute or as slow as 50 beats per minute on a cold night when they experience torpor, a hibernation-like state. It was love at first sight when I saw my first hummingbird. That was in California many years ago when I first moved to the US from England. I don't know what species it was that I saw, but probably an anna's, like this one. I didn't know at that time that there are more than 340 species of hummingbird, and that they are all in the Americas, mostly in Central and South America. In Arizona, you'll be able to see 14 species if you're lucky, and we are going to look at these 14. Firstly, the easy group. You should be able to see all of these four species without much effort. They visit flowers and nectar feeders in backyards and local parks and gardens. Next, you should be able to see this group with a little effort by traveling to specific places where they can be found at the right time of year. Lastly, this group will be difficult to find and you'll have to confirm that they have been recently reported at a specific location. You should consult eBird for recent sightings. In eBird, type Arizona in Explore Regions. You'll then get a list of all 564 species of birds that have ever been seen in Arizona. We'll search for plain-capped starthroat. One was reported at Ash Canyon Bird Sanctuary yesterday. Click on the title and we get a photo and information about the plain-capped starthroat. Now let's look at all 14 Arizona hummingbirds. Anna's hummingbirds are common residents in Arizona. In fact, they're the most common hummingbird and can be seen all year round. Look for them at hummingbird feeders. Male Anna's can be identified by their rose-red crowns and throats. They're the only hummingbirds you'll see in Arizona with a red head. So if you see a red-headed hummingbird, it'll be an Anna's. They're stocky, with a straight and fairly short bill compared with other small hummingbirds. The female is not as easy to identify as are most female hummingbirds. Look for a red spot on the throat and a shorter bill to distinguish it from a female costas or black chinned. Broadbill hummingbirds are regular visitors to Arizona nectar feeders. Although older publications state they go south to Mexico in the winter, but the broadbills in my Tucson yard, at about 3,000 feet, stay all year round. They have successfully nested in the yard for the past few years. Broadbills are easy to identify because of their black-tipped red bills. 
The only other Arizona hummingbird with a red beak are white-eared, which are quite rare. Males have iridescent blue gorgets and shimmering emerald green bodies. You can recognize a female broadbill by the red at the base of its bill. It doesn't show up in this photograph, but the light eye stripe and the blue tail feathers tipped with white say that it's a broadbill. You can see the red at the base of the bill in this photograph. The third of the three most common Arizona hummingbirds is Costa's hummingbird with its beautiful purple crown and long flared purple throat feathers. When it catches the light, it's a real beauty. I see Costas in my yard every day throughout the year. They are small, short-tailed hummingbirds. Here's a female. Notice it has a shortish down curved bill and a short tail with white tips on the outer feathers. Its back and crown are green. Black chained hummingbirds used to be regular visitors to our feeders, but we haven't seen any for a few years. I don't know why, as they're fairly common in Arizona. The males can be identified by the black throat with a band of purple on the bottom, which can be seen in the right light. This female was photographed in Sabino Canyon. As with all Arizona hummingbirds, the female builds the nest, incubates the eggs, usually two of them, and then takes care of the young without any help from the male at all who leaves the scene after mating. This female black chin is not only getting nectar but is also helping to pollinate the plant. Broad-tailed hummingbirds are usually found at high elevations. I usually see them every time I go to Mount Lemon or Madeira Canyon. The throat of the male is a bright rose red similar to Anna's, but the broadbills do not have red crowns like Anna's. Their crowns are brilliant emerald green. Broadtails are larger and have much longer tails than the other small hummingbirds we've looked at so far. The throat of the female is pale with scattered grey spots and the sides are noticeably rufous. Look how the tail extends beyond the wingtips when this female is perched. Now we get to one of my favourites, the Rufus hummingbird. Look at the brilliant orange gorget on this handsome male. Unfortunately, we don't get to see them in Arizona all year round. They migrate from Mexico to Canada and even as far as Alaska. So we only get to see them when they're passing through. Some years they visit our feeders and stay for a few days. Rufus hummingbirds are very aggressive and although small, they chase away other birds that attempt to approach flowers and feeders in their territories. Because of their colouring, Rufus hummingbirds cannot be confused with any other Arizona hummingbirds. Allen's hummingbird is very similar, but we don't get those in Arizona. The former name for the Rivoli's hummingbird was the Magnificent Hummingbird, which I think is a much more appropriate name. Look at the magnificent emerald green throat and purple crown. But the throat and crown appear black when they're not facing you in the right light, just as in this photograph. 
Rivoli is a large hummingbird. It's the second largest in Arizona after the blue-throated. And they have long bills and long tails. They are fairly common summer visitors, but they are scarce in the winter. The best way to find Rivoli hummingbirds is to visit feeders in the mountains of southeast Arizona. Most birding lodges and B&Bs have hummingbird gardens that attract them in the spring and summer. Females are mostly greyish below, greenish above, with limited pale tips in the tail corners. Both sexes have a small white mark behind the eye. We can tell that this is a female by the white tips on her tail. She's hunting insects. Besides drinking nectar, Rivolis also consume small insects and spiders. The pale chest and speckled throat, as well as the white tips on the tail, indicate that this is a female. The violet crown hummingbird with its pure white underparts, red bill and violet crown is very distinctive and you shouldn't have any trouble identifying it. That is, if you're lucky enough to find one. They're quite rare and are in Arizona from April to September. The best place to look for them is the Patton Center for Hummingbirds in Patagonia which is run by the Tucson Audubon Society. I've seen them there every time I've been. Males and females look alike, but males are a little larger and the crowns slightly brighter. Bear-line hummingbirds are rare in Arizona, but every summer a few show up. At the time of this recording, a female has successfully nested in Ramsey Canyon. The female is more patchy, but you can see the cinnamon on the wings. This is the nesting female from Ramsey Canyon, out gathering food for her two nestlings. The blue-throated mountain gem is the largest of the Arizona hummingbirds, and the male is easily recognized in the right light by its bright blue throat. If the blue is not visible on the throat, they can be confused with Rivoli's hummingbirds, which are a little smaller. Blue-throated mountain gems have long, broad tails with large white corners. This is one that will take some effort to see. You'll need to look on eBird to check if there have been any recent sightings. I was lucky to see this one in Cave Creek Canyon in the Chiricahua Mountains. The pronounced feature of the white-eared hummingbird is, of course, the long white stripe behind the eye which extends down to its shoulder. The bill is red, tipped with black. This is a young male. When it gets older, the black on the throat will turn violet blue. White ears are rarely seen north of the Mexican border, so this is another to check on eBird. In October 2022, this young male showed up in the grounds of the Arizona Sonora Desert Museum near Tucson. I was one of dozens of photographers who flocked to see him. Hummingbirds have 10 tail feathers as you can clearly see on this photograph. Most birds have 12. The middle two tail feathers do not move, they are fixed in position. The Calliope hummingbird is a high mountain bird that breeds in the mountains of the northwest of the USA and as far north as Canada. We occasionally see them in Arizona in April on their northward migration and again in August and September when they are on their way back to Mexico for the winter. They travel more than 5,000 miles each year to Mexico and back. The Calliope is the smallest of the hummingbirds that visits Arizona. In fact, it is the smallest of all birds in the US. Besides its size, it can easily be identified by the magenta stripes on its throat. The most distinctive feature of the Lucifer hummingbird is its long, downward-curved beak. 
Lucifers are small hummingbirds and often get chased away from the nectar feeders by other species. The males have brilliant magenta purple throats which extend in long feathers along the sides. A few usually visit southeast Arizona from March to September and the best place to find them is Ash Canyon Bird Sanctuary. Our final hummingbird is the plain-capped starthroat, which is probably the most rare of Arizona's hummingbirds, as it only occasionally strays across the border from Mexico. I normally don't like to include feeders in my photographs, but this is the only shot I've managed to get of a starthroat. He came down for a quick drink and quickly departed. The best place to see hummingbirds is in your own backyard. Plant native plants at hummingbirds favour and put up a nectar feeder to attract them. You are sure to see hummingbirds at the Desert Museum near Tucson as they have a large hummingbird aviary. The visitor centre on Mount Lemmon has feeders that attract a wide range of hummingbirds including the blue-throated mountain gem. The feeders at Santa Rita Lodge in Madeira Canyon attract a lot of hummingbirds and a lot of birders. The Patton Center in Patagonia is the place to go for the violet crowned hummingbird. Ramsey Canyon Preserve recently has had nesting beryline, violet crowned and black chin hummingbirds. Ask the volunteers at the visitor center for the latest information. Ash Canyon Bird Sanctuary recently had 12 different species of hummingbirds in one day. The Chiricahuas, another hummingbird heaven.